Hey guys, uh, I know it's been a long time since uh, I last video updated, but um, <laughs> my computer actually messed up and uh, I just got out of school, been busy with ministry and whatnot. I just didn't get around to it. Um, hopefully you guys will find this uh, video useful. We're gonna, I'm going to talk about uh, what makes a great worship leader and, and how to lead worship effectively. Um, these are just a few tips that I've learned from from doing it for you know for so long. Um, number one, I found that the heart is the most important thing. Um, talent is really nothing. It's not everything. I have heard plenty of people lead lead great worship services with almost no talent. Um, you know, you don't have to have the perfect voice. You don't have to have the perfect instrument. You don't have to have the perfect band, perfect everything. It's not about that. It's all about the heart. And uh, uh, your heart is going to reflect itself in your worship services. Um, your personal devotion life is going to to uh, show itself. It's going to echo through your your worship. And uh, when you're when you're up there leading, uh, you know if you don't have if you don't have a good devotional life, um, it's going to reflect your, the way you lead worship. Your heart won't be in it as good. The people won't react as good. Everything about leading worship is about your heart, where you're at, why you're there, stuff like that. Um, but on on the similar note, make sure you practice. Be sure to practice a bunch. There's a there's a bunch of uh, worship bands out there that are not bands professional, but bands is in a in a church that could really be, you know, effective. It's just that they're they don't practice very much. And I believe that you should be um, uh, led by the Spirit in your worship leading. However, I do not feel that it is right to um, to be lazy in your worship and never practice the instrument, never practice singing or the songs or anything like that, and just expect God to cover for you. I don't believe that that's right. Um, and also, lead. You're up there to lead. So make sure that when you're up there, you are leading. Uh, don't do your own thing, and uh, and don't detract, distract from worship. In other words, when you're up there, make sure that the people know what they're supposed to be doing. You're leading them. So you have to, uh, you know, don't just get up there and sing songs, interact with the people, but don't do it in such a way to, where it detracts from worship. One thing that I see a lot is worship leaders doing things where in between a song, they'll go to a slow song where, where they're, well, they'll try to build up an emotion, an emotional response instead of uh, a praise to God. And uh, during this time, they'll, they'll get up there and start sing something, and they'll try to preach to the people and really beat them over the head about what they should be doing. And um, it doesn't work as great as it sounds. It sounds like, oh, if you get up there and do that, you'll. But no, no, that's not what worship is about at all. Um, remember that it's not a show, and to be prepared for any circumstance. You don't know if anything's going to break, if the lights are going to go out. You don't know what's going to happen. So just be prepared for whatever, whatever. Uh, uh, might happen. Uh, also, don't forget to memorize songs. Uh, be prepared to do fewer songs if the spirit, if people aren't worshiping and you're just kind of dragging it out. M make sure that you can have fewer songs and you can cut it off. But also, in the same in the same breath, if the spirit starts moving and you feel like you should keep going, um, make sure that you have songs prepared. And for any anything that anywhere to where the spirit leads you, to where you're prepared for that, which goes back to your, to, our, to the heart of the worship leader, what, exactly what it always comes down to is the heart. Um, you won't know what to do if you're not in close walk with God. You'll think, oh, I should do this, when in actuality it's not God speaking and telling you to do that, it's you speaking and telling you to do that. Um, uh, don't try to do everything. Don't try to be the preacher and the worshiper and the, and the person who does the prayer requests and everything. Don't try to be everything. Get up there and do your job and work un effectively united with the other leaders in the church. Um, you know, get up there, lead the people, lead the people in worship. Do your thing, and when it's time for you to stop, be sure to stop. Don't drag it out. Um, uh, uh, don't beat them, because you don't beat sheep, you beat cattle. And the church is sheep, not cattle. So you're not supposed to be beating these people over the head. You're supposed to encourage them. If you if need be, rebuke and, and correct them, but don't forget to, the encouragement part. You know, uh, you're not the pastor. You're just the worship leader, and it's your job to lead the worship. Um, uh, be creative uh, w with with what you're doing. Don't don't settle for the same thing just because it's the way you've been taught. But instead, be creative and do how you feel is the uh, is the right way to to lead the set. Um, 
avoid too too much repetition in your song list. Don't do the same songs every week, but don't do all new songs every week. You know, um, uh, avoid too much repetition where it's just like you beat something to the ground. But um, uh, you don't have to always end a song before you go to the next song. In other words, okay, you sing a song. You know. Uh, um, how great is our God? Sing with me how great is our God, and all will see how great, how great is our God. Complete stop. Awkward pause, and then go to the next song. No, you don't always have to do that. Uh, Chris Tomlin gives us the perfect example with that song on his live CD, uh, Life in Austin Music Hall or something like that. And he goes, how great, how great is our God. Then he goes to, how great thou art. Then sings my soul. And he doesn't even stop, he just keeps going. That's the perfect example of how we as worship leaders don't need to always stop to transition to the next song. Um... Uh, don't have you don't have to do uh, a song same as the artist you can be fluid like with it you can repeat stuff if you want to you know you can hop around whatever uh, be, be united with your uh, teammates uh, your band teammates uh, make prayer your foundation before you start everything just make sure that you, um, your, your team has prayer as a major part of their um, life and as the band um, your spiritual progress will be mirrored by uh, them so you have to stay faithful. You are always an example. Uh, memorize songs. Uh, uh, follow the Spirit's leadings. Eye contact when you're singing, singing songs. Maintain eye contact with the people. Uh, lead by example. Don't expect them to do what you won't. Uh, be diverse with, song, with your song list. Experiment to see what, uh, what fits your sp specific group. You're not trying to change their minds. You're just trying to be sincere and pick what fits. And uh, uh, what I do is I go from fast to slow. You know, I'll do like a, fa a couple fast songs, a couple medium slow songs, a couple slow songs. Um, worship ne ne leaders need to lead, so be sure to lead. Um, you don't need to do all uh, Hillsong United all the time. You know, Hillsong United is a great band, and they really know how to worship. They write great worship songs, but that does not mean that they're God, and they will not move the spirit more than any or other worship songs. And uh, but also, you need to be sure to pick something that they will like instead of uh, picking something that you like. For instance, if you're leading for old people. Older people, I should say. Please don't take offense to that. If you're leading for older people that like hymns, do hymns. You don't need to do newer songs just to try to teach them what's out. You know, just uh, uh, work good with your, with your congregation and work effectively and remember that it's all about your heart.